Hey guys, welcome back to Non Central. So about a year ago, this person commented asking how to make non, and I thought that as a cheeky little response, I would say that, you know, I would make it at 100 subscribers. I never actually thought that we'd hit this milestone, but now that we're here, I guess we're going to be making some non from scratch at home without an oven. As we usually do, we're going to be starting off by weighing out our flour in a large mixing bowl. Next, we're going to add a teaspoon of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, three quarters of a teaspoon of baking powder, and a teaspoon of yeast. I'm using instant yeast here, but if you're using active dry, I would recommend waiting to add it to the milk first. Next, we're going to whisk together our dry ingredients so they incorporate more evenly into the dough. Next, we're going to measure out 125 milliliters, or about half a cup of milk. Then we're going to heat the milk in the microwave on high for 30 seconds. At that point, it's going to be a bit hotter than we need it to be, but it's okay because it's going to cool down once we add in our yogurt. Back over to our dry ingredients, we're going to add in our yogurt and milk mixture. Before we mix all these ingredients together, we're going to add in 2 tablespoons of oil. For the mixing step, you can go ahead and just use your hands, but I like starting off with this plastic spatula before I get my hands in there. Once the dough has reached the stage and there's no more visible liquid in the bowl, we're going to switch to our hands and knead the dough together. At this point, you may need to assess the hydration of the dough and add in a tablespoon or two of water if necessary, but just remember that with non dough, it's better to err on the side of too dry versus too wet. When adding water to the dough, the outside tends to get this frustratingly sticky texture, so it might be a good idea to employ this method of just throwing the dough against the bowl. Once the surface of the dough is just barely sticky, and it rises back ever so slightly when poked, we are done kneading. Next, we're going to cover the bowl with a damp cloth or some plastic wrap and let the dough rise for an hour. After an hour, the dough should have risen a bit, although it may be less than you'd expect compared to other bread recipes since this one is a bit drier. Next, we're going to weigh out the dough so that we can evenly divide it into 5 pieces. Mine is 525 grams, so each piece is going to be 105 grams. Next, we're going to divide up and weigh our individual dough portions. You can tear them off using your hand, or you can do what I do and use a pair of kitchen shears. With the portions weighed out, we're going to take each individual piece and form them into balls, which as you can see here, I accidentally did mostly out of frame. With all the dough balls formed, we can keep them together in the same bowl since they're not very likely to stick to each other, and let them proof for 15 minutes covered. After 15 minutes, they probably look exactly the same, but they are now ready to roll out. Although it may be tempting, try to avoid adding flour to the dough at this stage, since we actually want it to stick to the counter a little bit as it's going to make it easier to roll out. It's a bit difficult to describe the process here, but essentially what I'm doing is rolling out the dough and then rotating every now and then to widen it in the other direction. Overall, what I'm aiming for is a shape that's sort of oblong and tapered if that makes any sense, and a thickness that's slightly thicker than the thinnest that I would feel comfortable rolling it by hand, maybe 2 millimeters. You could roll these out into circles or ovals if you want, but I like this shape because it's sort of reminiscent of the ones that you'd find in a freezer aisle. When it comes to actually cooking the naan, what I'm using here is called a towa, but if you don't have one, you can also use a cast iron pan, or even better would be a carbon steel pan. Here we're trying to replicate the effect of the intense dry heat that you would see in a tandoor that this would traditionally be cooked in, since you can't really hit those temperatures inside a home oven. With our pan preheated on medium high heat, what we're going to do is basically adhere the dough to the cooking surface using some water. Then we're going to continue to cook the naan using medium high heat, and eventually we should start to see some bubbles. Once we have some sizable bubbles, and we can barely see some golden brown crust around the bottom edges, we can flip the towa or pan over and let the top of the naan continue to cook over the flame or electric heating element. 
At this point you'll have to crouch down underneath the stove top level to see how the non is doing and you basically have to move the towa or pan around the flame until the bubbles are brown but not charred. Once it looks something like this you can flip the towa over and remove the non. While rolling out the next non you'll want to turn the stove down to low and scrape out anything that may have stuck to the pan or towa. With our non evacuated to a plate, while it's still nice and hot, we're going to rub it down with some salted butter. Another option for browning the non if you don't feel comfortable inverting a pan over a stove top is to use a broiler set to high, which can work in a pinch but gives you some browning that's a bit more uniform. Here's how that non turned out. Either way, I highly recommend that you try this out at home, because it is definitely possible to make some great tasting naan even without a tandoor. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, and thank you for 100 subscribers. I'll see you in the next video.